do you know to swim? You better learn quick, Jim. If you don't know to swim, you better have breakfast with Bob. Ooh la la la, ooh la 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 la. Ooh la la la, ooh la 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 la. Oh. Pacho Man! Welcome to day two of Breakfast with Bob. My name is Bob Babbitt. We are brought to you by EAS Sports Nutrition by Hoka One One Polar Oska Wellness. Velo Fix will be doing our championship edition on Sunday at Four Seasons Hualalai, and we are airing on triathlonworld.com. My next guest, 13th place last year, Mr. Joe Skipper. How you doing, Joe? I'm great, thanks, Bob. Uh, yeah, it's brilliant to be on the show. Always fun to talk to you, Joe. <laughs> and what I love is last year you were 13th, and when you look back at it, it was not a good race for you. No, no, it was, very, re it was a really average race for me. Uh, I thought I had an average swim. Uh, the bike was at, felt was average, looking at the numbers, and uh, the run, I just completely melted out there on the, on the Queen K. And still took 13th. Yeah, so I've got a lot of confidence going ahead to this year. Well, and when you got home, you thought maybe your power meter was broken because your wattage was so low. Yeah, I did. Uh, the whole time I was out here, I didn't really hit that many, that, that many good sessions. Well, to be honest, I think I hit one, and that was it. So I thought, oh, I'm not, the, the humidity must be playing up my power meter because I, I hit some terrible watts in the race as well. And then... Uh, yeah, I got home and uh, it wasn't broken. I was just <laughs> you were uh, broken. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I was broken. <laughs> so what's fun too is this. This is 2016. Your first triathlon was just 2010. Yeah, yeah. At the end of 2010, I was doing cycling at the time, and uh, I was kind of like losing my way of it a bit. I was fine, like a load of the guys who I was training with moved moved away, and I was doing a lot by myself. And I thought, you know what, I quite fancy doing an Ironman eventually so i'm gonna do a half at the end of the year and uh just for fun yeah just for fun i, I did it and i thought cool that was tough like i really like that like the you know the feeling of just being broken at the end of a race yes and you like that oh i loved it yeah yeah i loved the it fact that you gave everything you had yeah yeah and it's an individual effort isn't it you know like when you're doing road racing and um you kind of rely on the uh the efforts of others in your team and right if you feel like others in your team aren't really pulling the weight and you're kind of like carrying them it's a bit disheartening sometimes i mean sometimes it can work in your favor because you work together as a team and you get you pull off a great result and you're right. like that that was awesome but then other times you when you feel like you're in good form and you don't get the results what you think you deserve it's yeah it's it's, it's annoying and uh that's what i like about triathlon like you always get what you always get what you put in really well, Caroline Stefan, who's done, obviously, one of the top female triathletes, was a road, ra road ra raced on a, a cycling team. And she told me that, you know, I got to the point where I was sort of tired of doing all the work for other people and have them go up on the podium and get the glory. <laughs> if I'm going to work, I should get my own glory. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and then Lucy Gossage was the one who sort of convinced you that, you know what, you could be good at this. You could be a pro. Yeah, well, I, I, was, I, I think I met her in 2011 yeah. at a, a localish race. And I was a student at the time, uh, didn't really have much money, and uh, she said, oh, why don't you race pro? And I was uh, thinking, oh, I don't really know if I'm, uh, if I, if I, if I'm uh, good enough at the moment, you know, because yeah. it's not my first full season. And she was like, oh, well, you get free entries, they'll put you up. And I was like, well, right, where, where do I sign up? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, just uh, started off doing, doing that. Like, um, and, yeah, then each year just got a little bit, a little bit better and uh, just carried on. It's gone from there, really. So, and then in, in 2012, you were... Uh, it, you moved to Spain, right? Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, that's right, at the end of the year. And the um, training center, and, and so everything was pretty close by. You had a, a place that was fairly cheap. and Yeah, yeah, exactly. The guy, I'm, I went on a training camp there in 2011, Yeah. and the guy wanted to kind of expand it a bit in 2012, so he put an advert out saying he was looking for three or four people. Uh, you got free accommodation, and he'd give you something like 50 euros a week, and basically you just had to, like, sh you know, show people around when they came there, but... You could train pretty much full time. Yeah. Uh, so I thought, well, that's a good opportunity. I've got nothing to lose. You know, I've just finished uni. I um, uh, haven't got like a decent job or anything like that. So I thought, well, I might as well go there, can sure. train full time, and then in 2013, see if I get better results and, uh, tr yeah, just try and take it a bit further. So, um, yeah, that was why I went there. Was there a point during 2013, because you know, you're racing and you're sort of trying to support yourself, where you didn't know if you could continue on as a pro? Yeah, yeah, it wasn't just 2013. It, it was, was like, every it year. It was like every year, basically. <laughs> like, I was thinking, I don't know, like, because I mean, it was tough. It was tough, but I, I really wanted to do it because I like, I, like, really enjoyed it and everything. But I was kind of thinking, like, oh, like, should should I get a proper job? Because I, it was kind of like when you see all your mates and stuff who are like, get it, doing well, you know, like putting deposits down houses and like. At and, that time, and what are you doing, Joe? Yeah, I was with my parents in 2013. <laughs> I was thinking, God, like, am I? Uh, I was just like, I just 
at the time it wasn't too bad that I was living there, but I just thought, where would I be? Where might I be in like two or three years' time down the line? You know, like you think, oh God, like am I wasting my time? My mum and dad just kept saying, like, no, you're doing, you're doing all right. Just keep it going. So they were supporting you. Oh yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. They, they so they probably saw the, the the talent in you maybe before you did. That yeah, they thought probably. That, yeah, you had I, more more I thought upside. I could be up there. I always thought I could like do really well. But I just kind of thought, like, um, am I going to run out of money before I get yeah. there, like, kind of thing. So, but in 13, third at Ironman UK, 10th at Florida. Uh, so, all of a sudden, you're having some good results. Yeah, yeah. For, like, 10th in Florida was, that was a bit dis of a disappointment in a way because I got a draft and penalty. So, and because we were in a big pace line, a okay. few guys got, like, a lead. But, I mean, it was a good time. It, at the time, it was uh, a decent time and it was all right. But the third at Ironman UK, I was more pleased with yes because, yeah well it's back but. at home too so w when you come here for the first time in 2015 well actually even that whole year you're second at Ironman Texas third at the ITU World Championships third at Ironman UK 13th in Kona that's, yeah. a, that's a great year yeah yeah that was a good year it was a big step up and that was the you know the good thing you look back and you, you see what you were doing in 2014 and because the results had got so much better and i, I kind of knew that i was in better form anyway because of what times i'd been hitting in training and right. you know everything like that so uh yeah so but this year uh second at challenge roth right now obviously jan was in a different time zone he, yeah. had, he went 735 <laughs> but still that's a world-class race yeah. And you also got uh, second at Challenge Galway and second Ironman New Zealand. That was yeah. huge. Yeah, that was good. That that was awesome. Like uh, the New Zealand one was was that I was really imp like impressed with myself with that because at, at the end of December on like the New Year's Eve I broke yeah. my collarbone. Oh no! And, yeah, and ruptured the ligaments like six weeks before I was meant to race Wanaka. I'd literally booked my flights three days before, and I like for for four or five weeks yeah. I couldn't even swim. Uh, I only started swimming like. 10 days before the first Ironman out there. Yes. Um, and being a great swimmer, as I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you needed yeah. was that, right? <laughs> yeah, all I needed was that. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that was good because I didn't really feel like I was in that great fitness, you know, coming from, like, English winter and stuff. So right. to go out there, get, a, like, be up there close to Cameron Brown and a load of the others, I, that kind of gave me a huge confidence boost because I thought, wow, like, when I, if I am get in, you know, 100% fitness, what I'm hoping for for Roth, I could actually do something big. What did you think about Roth? Was that the first time you've been there? Yeah, it was awesome. Isn't that an amazing place? Oh, yeah, it's incredible, yeah. The crowds on the bike? Yeah, the crowds. The, the, the whole town gets behind it, don't they? Like, all the people. Yeah, it was, it was unbelievable. So, when you look at this year's race, obviously, you know, you, you had a really, you've had a really good season, uh, especially coming off a broke collarbone. Uh, last year, you took 13th, having, basically, for you, not a good race. Yeah. You must have some nice confidence going in this year's race. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I want to try and... I want to try and get in the top five. Um, that's going to be my goal. Yes. Um, I'm swimming better now than what I was, so I'm hoping if I, if I have a really good day, maybe I can get onto the back of that first pack. But if not, I not really. It's not going to be like I'm going to think that my race is over because last year I managed to ride the only two minutes slower than the fastest bike split. So I've got the confidence that I've I've got a better setup now and everything. I think I could hold them, probably even take time out of them, and then with the run, what I did at Roth. Um, yeah, which I, I think actually is the, f the fastest in an Ironman like distance this year. That you've got you've got to back yourself, haven't you? When right. you've, when you've done a run like that coming into it. So, and uh, did not a mom and dad come out for this? No, they came out last year, but my mom rang me up and was like, "Oh, I feel ever so bad not coming out and watching you." <laughs> <laughs> oh, because they were there yeah. supporting you when, yeah, when yeah. you she needed said, them. I'm definitely coming out next year. <laughs> what uh, when you look back at, at your your career has been since like, 2010, so it's not that long. Yeah. Was there one race that was the most important to you that that sort of confirmed that you had made the right choice to be a professional triathlete? Um, no, not just one race. It was more like the whole process. Oh, okay. Yeah, like just seeing myself getting faster in training the whole time and not feeling like I'd hit a plateau that was more of it because it's, yeah if you see yourself getting faster all the time you think well I'm still improving like right now I can still go and get better results so it was more the whole looking back at the process like looking back where I've come from each year which is shows me that I love it um, and after Kona do you take some time off uh, or are you doing some of the winter races too no nah, no nah, I'll take some time off like drink some beer get a bit fat <laughs> And then think about next year. Now, in terms, do you do you coach yourself? Do you have somebody else coaching you? What do you do? I, I did coach myself up until June this year, but I've actually got a coach uh, now. And, has that uh, made a difference? Yeah, it has made a big difference. Actually, I was uh, saying to my friends, I wish I had uh, got a coach years ago, <laughs> but, but then I kind of like 
think I did learn a lot when I was doing it myself, but it has really helped, like, having one. It makes a big difference. Yeah, it just saves loads of time, and you don't, like, second-guess yourself, and you don't, like, just the time of, like, actually, like, planning what you're going to do, and, like, you know, you might think, oh, I'll see how I feel, like, especially with my swimming, like, I'd go to the pool, and I'd think, oh, we'll do a hard set today, and I'd get in, I'd be like, oh, I'm not feeling it today. Right. Um, I'll do it tomorrow, you know, or something like that, whereas when someone else, you're accountable to someone else, and they've said you've got to do, you know, this session, I, in my head, I just can't go to the pool, and not do it like I, ha- I have to do what's what's on there you know unless i'm feeling battered it sort of eliminates the thinking yeah right? exactly. you just, yeah, you, just here's my time i have to do is if it's if you're coming up with your own workout you can always vary it but if somebody else is doing it yeah you feel totally. obligated. yeah exactly and the, and i've been seeing myself improving loads like across this one so i think god like this is working you know like i'll stick to it <laughs> that is so do you feel that the main thing you have to work on to become that upper tier is a swim oh yeah definitely yeah if i can get the swim like sorted i think i'd be i'd be right up there in the races because the bike is not going to be a problem like i think i could easily bike in the pace line it'd be cruising yes and you could also rip it up a bit you know like you could make it interesting you could get some of the climbs put a few digs in you know just spice it up um hurt some people's legs yeah it'd be it'd be brilliant being able to like be up there from the start and then uh, on the run just see see what you got you know well when you're up there then you can sort of see what the other and sometimes when you're sitting back when you're going up through the field you're always thinking that there's a pace line and they're riding illegally and who knows what's going on up there but if you're there and you can see people yeah. you can actually look them in the eye and see what's going on yeah exactly like you can see them and yeah i'd just like to it'd be good to do that because obviously you tack the tack you can do a lot more tactics when you're up there like when you're chasing that's literally your only tactic is try and get get, get there. there yeah basically get there and then you kind of get on the run you just like you're either still chasing or you then you're racing but when you're up there from the swim, you're racing from the start, aren't you? And it's a completely different ball game. So last year, when you, you come out of the water and you're you're chasing, basically, yeah. uh, were you looking down at your power meter, just thinking, what is no, going I on here? Even, I didn't even bother looking because it was so bad leading up to the race that I just right, of, even leading up to the race. So you were really fatigued just going into the race. Yeah, I didn't know if I was fatigued because I was running well. I just don't know if I underestimated the heat or like. Right. I mean, I must have had a bit. Of, I might have had a bit of fatigue. I don't know what it was, but. Um, it was just generally low, but it wasn't like I didn't feel pati- like fatigued. I would say like I didn't feel bad. It was just low. That's why I thought it might have been under reading, but yeah, it wasn't. I, I was actually backing myself to do a really good run last year because yes. out here in training, I'd been running quite well. So I was thinking, well, I know my bike's not going to be that great, but I think I'll do a, a good run. But yeah, it was the opposite. I did a better bike, and then the your, run your run was, wasn't yeah, up to your was, standards. No, it was really really bad. And in, in terms of how fast do you think you can run this course? Um, God, if, on a good day, yeah, I think 245, maybe 245. under. Yeah, maybe under 245 on a good day. You do 245 here, your podium. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm trying to think. That's what I'm thinking to myself. Love it. So uh, yeah, I reckon yeah, 245. I mean, that's like six, seven minutes slower than Roth. Maybe even quicker. Yes. Like, I'd like to do under like at least under 250 on a bad day. Um, so yeah, we'll see how it goes. Love it, Joe. Hey, thanks so much for taking time. Really enjoy your energy. And yeah. you're, uh, you're going to be fun to watch on Saturday. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, mate. I hope to uh, animate the race in some way anyway and be up there. I love it. Joe Skipper has been our guest. Pacho Man, take oh. us out. If you do the swim, you better learn quick, too. If you don't the swim, you better have breakfast with Bob. Ooh, la, la, la. Ooh, la, 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 la. Ooh, la, la, la. Ooh, la, 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 la. Hello? Yeah. Hi, he's coming down. Yeah. Hi. What's the serve?